Everyone, Nathan here at Glass for Classics. Today we're going to be running you through assembling your LC LJ Tirana Quad Event Window Assemblies. It is a very straightforward process. There is a couple of little tricks and things that we will walk you through doing this. Now, this has uh, obviously been nicely repainted. We've supplied brand new glass for this. The customer has had uh, the button here re-chromed and they've also bought the new stainless steel uh, pivot pins at the bottom here that you can get. Uh, these are a rare spares vent rubber. They are very good, I actually really like these. They fit really, really well. So, first process, vent rubber. The only things you really need to do to these in advance is probably just trim out these bottom holes. And this top one on the back, there's sometimes a little bit of wastage from when they've actually cast it. It just stops the pins going through. So, initially, line this bottom corner up. I just start down there. You don't need to even lubricate these. They just click straight in. So we'll just slide these in all the way around. As I said, these happen to be a rare spares one. They do fit very well. I like these particular ones when I'm fitting. Clicks into the front there. And that's done. Now, next process, we'll put that to one side. Quarter bit window. Now, you've basically got three points that'll be going through this glass. This is your bottom one. There is a company that does reproduce these in stainless steel. Uh, so this customer has got these, polished them up. These are the original upper pins. Look, if you don't have to re-chrome these, try not to because they do tend to blow out and lose a little bit of their nice detail through there. They have actually had this particular button re-chrome, which is the vent window lock. The only thing we did through here is you can see it's actually, we've just smoothed this out a little bit because when it went through the chroming process, there were a few small dags. So we've just very, very carefully filed this down to get the shape back on it so that the lock will actually sit back on here and won't be a problem. Now, when you sit this through the glass, there's actually quite a bit of free play and you've got the potential for metal on metal. So we go down at Bunnings. These are just for irrigation. They're just different short lengths of hose that you can get. They're only a couple of dollars each. Eight millimeter is what we use to slip over this one. And we use six millimeter to go over these. So if you literally just push that onto there, that's a nice snug fit. It won't fall off at all. So all we do, just grab a blade, we trim this. That will now, when we push this through the glass, it's helping center it, but it's also insulating the glass from that metal pin. And this has only got about a millimeter or two worth of movement, which is ideal. So we'll do our top one as well. Top and bottom pins, both with the exact same thing. Again, just carefully trim that back flush. And that's our top pin ready to go. Oops, backwards, that way. Now, the other thing we do, there's nothing on the outside of this. This does sit flat on the glass. But what we do, again, using the same pipe, they did originally have a fibre washer on them when they put these back together again. You can find sometimes too, the fibre washers aren't always necessarily the right size, the right diameter. We actually use the same irrigation pipe, as I said. All we're gonna do, I've just pre-cut this oversize, put a hole through the middle, push that through there. You can see that it's actually oversized. So we're gonna come through, remembering that obviously this, there is a left and a right to these, and they go on the outside face of the glass. So we're just gonna sit that on there, grab our screwdriver. Tighten this up. When you tighten this, you still need to have a little bit of movement through here because you need to line it up inside the actual frame itself. So get this about 80 or 90 percent and leave it. Right, now we have our top engine. Next process is this has to be put into the upper part of the frame. So in the top here, if I roll this over, you can actually see there's a hole which is where the top of that pin is ultimately going to push through. So we spin this around, we're going to slide this in and you can actually see, if you come in here with the camera, 
you can actually see the hole nice and clearly where we're actually going to put this in. So we're going to slide this straight into there. Okay, we're in. So, next process is the lower pin. Remembering, we've already got our uh, clear PVC tube on here to insulate it. So we're gonna push this through the bottom here. Now, the next step is this particular washer. The easiest way of remembering which way this goes is this long flat section on the top here faces the outside or the front of your quarter vent frame. So we just slide this through, it's gonna slip over the top and then we push that through. The bottom there, good stuff, all right. Flip this over, we're gonna do the same again with our nut and our piece of PVC pipe tube. Again, if you've got a rubber washer or you've actually got some of the uh, fiber washers, you can use that. I just happen to like this because it does a really good job of insulating it and stopping any vibration. So again, we'll tighten, tighten this up, we'll go about 80 or 90% on this to start with. Initially just make sure that this is pivoting as it should and your top hasn't slipped out. We're happy with that. Now, the process for these, bring this one over, if you come up close, you can come in close. So if you have a look at this, the first one we have is the nylon washer. So the nylon washer is going to go in there. You then got your round washer here, which has actually got the slotted um, slotted base on it to fit over. There's then a small spring that sits in between. You then have another one of these washers sits on top, the metal one, to insulate the metal one. And then another one of your nylon washers. Now, the original nuts on these were crimped. So if you are trying to, if you have already, haven't already got them off, I generally suggest cutting the old nuts off because they did crimp them from the factory. Uh, you can use a lock nut, which is what we happen to have here. The customer's given us this one, or on this one because they didn't have another. We've just doubled up the nuts and locked them against each other because the last thing you want is for one of these to loosen off and your vent windows sort of loose uh, while you're driving down the highway. Now, so for this particular one, I am missing the other spring. They haven't supplied it, so I'm going to assemble this as best I can for now and they can find the other pieces later. Uh, so again, we're missing the spring and one of these, they'll pop that back on later on. In the interest of just assembling this, I'm just going to put this together now so that you've got that. Now, now we're going to move on to our quarter vent lock. As I mentioned on this, if you have had these re-chromed, just make sure you're smoothing this out because you do need this lock to be able to spin the 90 degrees that it needs to lock. This is the 8mm PVC tube. I've just cut a piece already to slip over here. So put this on in advance. So that that's insulated, we're going to pop this through the glass from the outside. If you have a look at this, we have no movement. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want on that particular one there. Now, uh, I will, again, I've cut some of the PVC, so we'll put that on there. That'll then insulate the head against the glass, so as you tighten this, you don't accidentally blow it up. We'll put our insulator back on there again. So that's nice and tight. Pop that through. Now, customer happens to have one of these fiber washers, which is great, we'll reuse that one. These are the original uh, nuts that hold it on. You've just got the two flat spots. We'll tighten this up just by hand initially. this open give us a bit more space so initially we're just going to tighten this again about 90% you'll feel it grabbing as it starts to compress the uh, the clear PVC on the outside so just keep going just enough okay that's starting to spin so the key with this I spin that this way this piece here has to be straight up and down for the lock to actually do its job. So I always just stick it on. You can see here the lock is just slightly out of alignment. 
So by pushing on that, I can square the handle up and that gives us our 90 degrees worth of rotation. Now to finally lock this off, I just have a small set of ply uh, shifter there. We just want to get another, probably half a rotation. Put our handle back on. That's perfect. That's now not going to actually spin while it's on there. Now, one thing that I do like to do is grab some anti-seize. Now, I use the anti-seize inside the lock handle itself and on the spring, A, to lubricate it, but it also prevents surface rust in the future. So I just very carefully line the inside of this all the way through. We'll grab our spring, which is over here. Pop him in there. A little bit more. Sit it on the edge of the spring. I'm also just going to give this a quick hit inside here. This is more just preventative maintenance, just so that you don't end up with this wanting to seize up on you at any point in the future. I'm going to pop this back on. Now in a second, I'm going to need a second set of hands. Get that on. So that's good. So that spring is giving us the tension that we need. Now, these are the original locking pins. If you've lost these, if you've had to drill them out, you can use a roll pin. There's nothing wrong with that. The original ones just happen to have that bird end on it so that when you push them in, it will actually hold. Now we pop that through from there. I've got just a very small punch, so I'll use my second set of hands in a minute behind the camera to help me tap this in and we'll come back. So you can see on this one here, the head's now been tapped in nice and flush and that's not going to come out at all. There's no movement in that. So the next step, making sure that everything is opening and closing, I just like to lock this shut. We're going to grab a nice clean razor blade, brand spanking new one. We're literally going to run this around the head of our screws and remove all the excess from there so that you can't see it. That ends up with a really neat finish all the way around. Once I'm done with that, we'll give these screws one final tighten make sure they haven't loosened off or they don't loosen off. Beauty. Good stuff. Flip it over, we're going to do our outside one. Remember to use a brand new razor blade. If you slip with an old razor blade, you risk actually scratching the glass. If you've got a brand new razor blade and you slip, chances are you won't scratch it and you might get away with that. Very, very carefully. That's now done. Now, at this point, making sure everything is sitting against the rubber nicely when it closes. If we come in close, you can see that the rubber on the back side is sitting up nice and tight against the glass when we close the lock. It's sitting up nice and tight. Tuck that back in. It's sitting there. Now, adjustment. I'll use this one as an example because it's got all these on. The key with this is to, for the first nut, tighten it up until you feel tension because you've got to remember, you want this, when you're doing 110 k an hour down the highway, for your vent window not to flap around and want to close. Tighten this up until you've got enough tension that you can just push it and it will keep holding all the way through its entire range of motion until the point at which it actually stops clean open. Then do your final tighten up of that and you're all good to go. So if you've got any other questions, feel free to let us know. We do supply all brand new glass for the LCLJ Tirana Coupes. Um, if you need assistance with assembly, we can certainly help out with that. If you need to give us a call, our number is 1300 442 000, or you can send us an email to enquiries at glassforclassics.com.au. Good luck.